gentlemen, we will continue with this venue. Again, thank you for everybody for showing up. We will be talking to the sheriff candidates for Pinal County. I will not explain what the duties of the sheriff are because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you they are the chief law enforcement officer for the entire county. 5,386 square miles, population of almost 380,000 people. The format will be the same. Again, I remind you this is not a football game. Um, there's a lot of passion in the room. I get that. Okay? Noted. That was be professional. All right. There, uh, there will be open remarks. The same thing. Two minutes for the opening remarks. We will go in alphabetical order, gentlemen. Then we'll have a question from the committee. You'll have one minute to answer that question. You'll have a question from the uh, audience. Turn those in. Remember the committee back there screens these and asks them. If your question does not get asked, I encourage you to speak to these candidates after the meeting and get your answer. Um, you'll have that question, and then it will be followed at the end, two minutes for closing remarks in reverse alphabetical order. Any questions from our candidates? Fantastic. All right. Our first candidate. And alphabetical order is Mr. Derek Arnson. You'll have two minutes for your opening remarks, sir. response time. We have cut emergency response time. That's what matters to you 
in the end, if David Burden and his family call 911 here in Gold Canyon, how quickly are our deputies going to be able to respond to his and his family's emergency? Well, we've cut that in half. Here in Gold Canyon specifically, it's eight minutes for a priority one call. Eight and a half, nine minutes average countywide. In Santan Valley, priority one has it's, it's gotten as low as three and a half minutes. Not with additional staff. We've re reorganized the sheriff's office, demanded and held people accountable. We brought new equipment, better training for all of our deputies, for our jail staff, and all of our staff, civilian staff. And it's resulted, much like the military and the lessons that I learned as an Army officer, it's resulted in increased performance, increased results for you. We had the largest drug bust in the history of Arizona this past year. And I take my hat off to all of our deputies, all of our law enforcement that partnered with us. Two to three billion dollars. Folks, this doesn't happen just because we wear a badge and carry a gun. It's because of leadership. And I'm going to talk to you tonight about what we've been able to change and improve service for who? For you, the people I work for as your sheriff. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sheriff Dudley. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett, you'll have two minutes for your opening, opening remarks. I want to thank you for being here tonight. This is an exciting group. I want to applaud everybody for being here because I've been to many of these meetings and never saw a group quite like this. I want to give you a little information about me. You had, we have a booth back in the back of our table, but I've been married to my bride for 36 years, nine children and 31 grandchildren, and our first great-grandchild. I've been a patrol deputy, a police officer, chief executive officer of the third largest sheriff's office in the United States. I've been certified in California, Alaska, and Arizona. I was the borough intelligence officer in Alaska, and I've worked in a jail setting that we had over 8,000 inmates per day. I worked with the Secret Service and was an advance man for the White House. I was elected city mayor, a strong mayor from the government. I worked on many budgets in my life. As a CEO, I administrated, administered all city departments. I had a top secret crypto security clearance in the U.S. Army. I was nominated for ambassador to the Republic of South Korea when I was 34 years old through the presidential transition team. I was also a surrogate speaker for President Reagan and Bush in their re-election. I graduated from two law enforcement academies. I attended the University of Alaska, ASU, and as the Kenai Peninsula Borough Community College in Police Studies, had an honorable discharge with the U.S. Army. I am a licensed real estate broker in the state of Arizona, and I have an honorary doctorate degree through Yeshua Christian University. I'm a born and raised Arizona. I have been here most of my adult life. I own property in Pinal and also Maricopa County. I want to thank you again for being here. This is what America is all about. Stand up and be counted for what you believe in. That's what I'm doing. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Our next candidate is Mr. Jack McLaren. Ms. Harvey, you'll have two minutes. Good evening. I'm Jack McLaren, and I would like to be your next Pinal County Sheriff. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a native Arizona. I've lived here in Pinal County for the last 36 years. I raised my three children here, and I have five grandchildren. I'm a U.S. Army veteran, and I have nearly two decades of law enforcement under my belt. I started out as a deputy with the Pinal County Sheriff's Office, and I worked my way up to commander. I currently reserve, I volunteer for the town of Florence Police Department as their motorcycle officer. I volunteer in your community here as the vice president of the Boys and Girls Club here at Apache Junction. During my law enforcement career, I started out as a deputy. Right here in this community, I worked my way up to every rank all the way to command. I'm currently endorsed by your AJ and uh, Gold Canyon firefighters, and I re recently picked up the endorsement from the Fraternal Order of Police, which 
overseas and has 6,500 members here in the state of Arizona, and they gave me their endorsement to be your Pinal County Sheriff. I'm active in my church. I go to the Spring Alive, Spring Alive Church. I've been a member there for the last 10 years. I can tell you, as your sheriff, the most important thing to do right away is to bring dignity back to the leadership at the sheriff's office, and I plan to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clare. Our next candidate is Mr. Glenn Millsap. Mr. Millsap, you'll have two minutes to complete your opening remarks. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Glenn Millsap. So I'm planning for a Again. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Glenn Millsap. I'm a candidate for Pinell County Sheriff here. When I began this campaign, I started out with about 14 verifiable gray hairs. Right now, I'm up to about 18. <laughs> it's something. When I was a young man, a sheriff appeared in my front door, Sheriff Phil Redman. My mother and father called Sheriff Phil Redman and said, Sheriff, you better come down here and get my son. Because I'm going to kill him. <laughs> Sheriff Redman appeared at my front door, told me to get in his vehicle, and we drove down the street. When I came back, I was a brand new man. He convinced me, at the age of almost nine years old, of what it is like to be a police officer. Of what it is like to be a community advocate. Those are the things that I want to bring here to Pinell County. A spree de corps, principles. Those are the type of things that need to be implemented within a department. My actions as a leader are endemic. They're widespread. So what I do is what I expect, quote unquote, the truth to do. What I bring to the table is this, a criminal justice career a strong criminal justice career, federal law enforcement agent with the United States Department of Justice, police officer, correction officer, worked on the death row. That's, undis that's undisputable. What you need, ladies and gentlemen, here is a professional who can come in here and find out what is going on in the department. That's what it will take for us to find out what's going on in the department. So what I plan to do is this, implement a performance-based measure that's going to include improving the morale, the leadership, and the accountability. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Our next candidate is Mr. Tyne Morgan. Mr. Morgan, you'll have two minutes to complete your opening remarks. Thank you. Is this on? Yes, thank you. First, I'd like to thank everybody for being here. And secondly, I would like to thank you for having me. Um, I am an independent candidate. I do not have an opponent in the primary, so I'm the only one at this point that has actually made it to the general election. <laughs> I'm waiting to see which two of these gentlemen will be facing me in the general election November the 6th. I have been a police officer in Pinell County my entire career, 30 years. Prior to becoming a police officer in Pinell County, I was a correctional officer in the Arizona State Department of Corrections. If there's one thing that we need to remove from law enforcement, it's political lobbyists and special interest groups. That's why I'm an independent. We need to remove any political influence from our law enforcement. There should not be lobbyists, there should not be special interest groups focusing and influencing what our young and veteran officers do and the decisions they make on the streets. We're governed by the law. That's what I want to bring back to the Sheriff's Office. I, I like what Maxine Brown had to say uh, in her closing remarks. When you're hiring somebody, you want to hire that person with the most experience, the most skill, the most knowledge. That person is going to bring the things that you want and the changes that you need to see. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm going to answer all the questions this evening, uh, hopefully to the best of my ability. I'm not going to waste a lot of your time. But I would say to you, in November, 
when you go to the ballot, regardless of which person is chosen in this primary, the most experienced, the person that's been there and done that in Pinell County would be the independent candidate, Ty Morgan. I would also say to you that I was patrolling the streets of Pinell County as an officer when some of these guys were still in school learning what key words they had to say to politically get you involved. Mr. How Morgan, they your time is up. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, uh, last candidate for Pinell County Sheriff is Mr. Kevin Taylor. Mr. Taylor, you'll have two minutes to complete your work. Good evening, everyone. Just want to know that somebody up there is going to be your next sheriff of Pinell County in November. What I bring to the table and what I bring to Pinell County is, first of all, I just want to be held accountable for everything that happens in Pinell County. I want to be accountable for my deputies. I want to be accountable for myself. And I want the people of Pinell County to let me know what is going wrong, what is going right. What I want to do is, is have a policy where you can able you can come and talk to the sheriff. There's some kind of stuff that we can set up where you have a community meeting, we can bring that to the table and have an open discussion to find out what's going on. What I bring to the table, I've been a deputy in, in the town of Cleveland, Ohio. I've been on the Lorraine Police Department and jail system. So I work both sides of the streets. Right now I'm currently a business owner of a security company and detective agency. Also what I'm going to bring back to Pinell County is professionalism. We need that, we need to have open communication with everybody in Pinell County, the Board of Supervisors, the trustees, and to whoever in that same category in Pinell County. There's a lot of things that not, that's, going, that's not going correctly, and there's some things that need to be found, you know, worked out together. So my model is I need to have everybody work together. We all should be able to get along in this county. Even though this county is just as big as New Hampshire, it's, it's a huge county. I'm still exploring the county. Uh, so one of my things that I want to do is make sure I hit all the counties and talk to all the people and hit the streets and, and, and just keep what I'm doing is, is, is walking and talking and backing up what I say. So come November, I would appreciate everyone's support and vote for me. Kevin Terry, your next Pinell County Sheriff. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. The next, uh, as your open remarks from your Pinell County Sheriff candidates, we're going to have uh, two questions. One question from the committee. We'll go in alphabetical order again for the first question. We'll go reverse alphabetical order for the second question. And then closing remarks will be reverse alphabetical order again, just so you can I'll keep track. You'll keep track for me. Um, so the question given by, and if you have a question out there and you don't have it turned in, you might want to get on that. Um, because right now I have, I have one, and it's a good one, but there might be another one out there. Um, okay, I'll say this and then you'll have it. And I'll say it, I'm happy to repeat it anytime. Though. Given the dramatic increase in gasoline prices and budget concerns, what is your position on allowing deputies and non-first responders to take home their vehicles, and does it matter if they live outside of Canal County? Mr. Arnson, you are up first, you'll have one minute. Thank you, Brian. Ladies and gentlemen, I dealt with this as a chief of police dealer with all of my officers at take home cars. I fought with the tribal council with that, and here's why. I did an absolute staff study on the pros and cons of why you would allow an officer to take home his or her assigned patrol vehicle, whether it was a primary response or not. And the numbers came out 50-50. The reason is because similar to Pinal County geographically, Keeler River is similar in its landmass geographically. And so for officers who lived outside the community in the west side of Phoenix or here in Canal County on the eastern side, the north or south, it was smart for me as a chief to prioritize where those officers served in that region, allow them to take home a car because the car was taken care of better. Our, our fleet prices went down significantly because the officers took better care of their cars. It's a 50-50, you will hear both sides of that. But I'm a proponent of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Uh, the next chair is going to be uh, Sheriff Pettyu. And for the record, ladies and gentlemen, you'll hear me address these candidates as a mister. Uh, I'm not in no way endorsing the sheriff. Uh, by addressing the sheriff as Sheriff Pettyu, you are the current sheriff of Sheriff Pettyu. Sure, that's fine. But I, that is the, the appropriate uh, uh, addressing. Uh, so, Mr. Uh, 
Chair Fabi, do you need me to repeat the question? No, I've got it. And yes. absolutely. Uh, some of you are actually neighbors with our deputies. And the heightened presence of having a patrol, a marked patrol unit in your neighborhood driving back home, if they're off shift, some of our deputies, we assign them by region. There's four geographic regions in the county that's larger, as we know, than, than three small U.S. states. So it raises the presence and the visibility of our marked patrol units. And, and this is where the issue about the gas with the Board of Supervisors is they funded the Sheriff's Office at a, at a $1.78 a gallon of fuel. Who here pays a $1.78 a gallon of fuel? Nobody does. And this is where absolutely I support this, especially because we have a lower staffing ratio. We do restrict or limit our patrol deputies to 10 miles outside of the county. And this is customary for, for any county. Even when I worked for Chandler, I always lived in Pinell County for the past 10 years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Barrett, would you like to repeat the question, sir? I think I have a question. Number one, any administrative person that has a take-on vehicle that lives outside of this county is not going to have a take-on vehicle. First responders, we have a responsibility, and that's to respond to emergency situations, not provide a vehicle, and not to provide gas for somebody that lives outside of this county that is not a first responder. The second thing, the sheriff, I'll address it because he keeps saying $1.78 per gallon. That is not true. He will supplement additional funds for that purpose. But an answer to your question is simply this. For me, there won't be take-home vehicles for non-emergent type people that work within the sheriff's office. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. McLaren, would you like to repeat the question, sir? I'm good, thank you. Take home vehicles for the deputies are very, very important. One, they have tons of equipment they have to haul around. When I started the sheriff's office, we had take home vehicles, and I'm proud that the sheriff's office can afford take home vehicles for the deputies right now. Take home vehicles for the deputies are very important, but they're only important because they're first responders. The, the folks there at the sheriff's office that aren't first responders, they don't need a take home vehicle. It doesn't matter if it's 10 miles out of the county. They don't need a take-home vehicle. That's not being a good steward of your taxpayers' money, giving non-first responders a take-home vehicle. I can tell you the importance of a deputy having a take-home vehicle. One, it is good when they're parked in the driveway for your community, but it's also good because they take a lot better care of that equipment if it's assigned to them, just like their weapon. If it's assigned to them, they're gonna take much better care of it. If they're a first responder, they'll continue, as when I'm your sheriff, they'll continue having a take-home car. If they're not a first responder, they will not have a take-home car. Thank you, Mr. McLaren. Mr. Millsap, would you like me to repeat the question, sir? Yes, sir, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, studies show that vehicle presence in the community of a, ve of a vehicle that's taken home by a police officer has shown that it does not help prevent or reduce crime. Those are the studies. Those are studies by the FBI crime uh, statistics report. Also, when I was with the Department of Justice, there was a special agent under investigation for waste, fraud, and abuse for taking home a vehicle and using it for other reasons than what it was intended for. Those are the key issues, waste, fraud, and abuse. What I intend to do is come in and investigate and find out whether or not the officers need to have use of the vehicles. That's the intended use. That's the intent of the, of the policy I plan to bring. The director of the FBI doesn't have, have, have a take-home vehicle. The director of the United States Marshal doesn't have a take-home vehicle. So it doesn't make sense for officers who do not have the need for the vehicles to take a vehicle home. So my plan is to end that, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Millsap. Mr. Morgan, would you like to ask a question, sir? No, uh, take home vehicles and, and fuel costs is the question. The first thing that's, that's happened is when, when you do a budget, you have to project your income and you have to project your, your expenditures. Somewhere along the line, somebody forgot to project correctly. 
when I sat as vice mayor of the town of Ford for six years, if we didn't project correctly on our income, we would end up short on the stick, and that's pretty much what happened. The projections were incorrect, apparently. Take home vehicles for first responders, in my opinion, are extremely important. Somewhere along the line, we've forgotten, though, that those take home vehicles are a benefit. When we talk about salaries at the Board of Supervisors meeting, when we talk about this deputy's not getting as much, this deputy isn't, we forget to figure in those, those vehicles as a benefit. Take home vehicles for non responders, administrative staff, especially those outside the county, absolutely not. Shouldn't be happening. It's a waste of taxpayers' dollars, and it just should flat not be happening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Mr. Taylor, would you like me to repeat the question, sir? No, sir. Thank you very much. Take home vehicles are very important in the county of Pinell. There's so much stuff going on with Pe uh, Pinell County that uh, supervisors, if you have a supervisor, you have troops working for you, if they're a police officer, they're a deputy sheriff, if, if you cannot trust them, they should not be on your force. So that's going to be enforced by the supervisor. So it would make it a lot better, a lot beneficial if you have an officer who has a vehicle at home because, as they said earlier, there's so much equipment in there and it doesn't make much time, much, make much sense to park your vehicle here, go get your stuff and load from one car to another. By that time, somebody's bike could be in danger. So it's very important, we're going to take it back to accountability. If that officer or female officer or male officer is doing something they're not supposed to be while they're in the company vehicle, then they're going to have to answer questions. So with that note being said, take home vehicles or go. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. <laughs> Mr. Taylor, you're first up for the second question from the audience. I will read this question as often as you gentlemen like. I'll read it once as we start off here. As a sheriff, how will you fight drug and human smuggling through Pinal County? Experience. There is so much going on in Pinal County that uh, the, the, the drug lords, the drug cartels, such and such, we have to have help from the outside agency. I think the current sheriff is, is, is doing an a outstanding job of, of uh, slowing down the, the so-called the so uh, cartels and how they do it. But we have to work with the other outside agencies that we have, the Border Patrol, the, the local police departments, to, to let everybody know that this is not going to be a, a, a go through the area through 347 or coming up the uh, 10 or coming in the back way going into Beckville. That's not going to stop. So I think we have to enforce those people. I think we get tips of what's going on through the county, through the county of people when the drug activity is going on. Uh, so my plan for that is, is increasing the manpower in the local areas where statistics show where all the drug happened at. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Mr. Morgan, you're next for the question. Would you like me to repeat it? Mr. Morgan, I'm happy to. As sheriff, how will you fight drug and human smuggling through Pinal County? Well, if you get ready and go back to my board, my table back there, you'll see many news articles that were done on me as a canine officer, the canine sergeant, and an interdiction officer. I've been working the road for many, many years and been very successful at it. I believe we need a more tactical approach uh, to doing what we're doing. Instead of pulling people away from your residential areas, the, the areas where we need high volume uh, deterrent type controls to keep burglaries down, to keep a lot of things down that, that are going on in your neighborhoods. Instead of taking manpower out of there, we need to do a more tactical approach. K-9 units, we have a, a fixed wing aircraft that can fly a reconnaissance missions very high and report any kind of movement in areas and, and then send people in. But to saturate an area and take manpower out at this point, it's, it's not accomplishing any more than what we could accomplish with a more tactical approach and bring some of our manpower back into our residential areas to protect you folks and the kids in those areas. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Mr. Milstaff, you are next. Would you like me to repeat the question, sir? Yes, sir. Mr. Milstaff, as sheriff, how will you fight drug and human smuggling through Pinal County? Ladies and gentlemen, I think the best way to fight the issue is to be able to first analyze 
where the problem began and how we can end the problem. One of the things that's happening right now in the Neal County Sheriff's Office is, is that there is an issue of determining how to prevent crime. In order to be able to prevent crime, you first have to be able to implement policy and procedures through a strategic plan. A strategic plan would be put in place in order to understand where, in fact, are the problems entering to, in, into the county. I can tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, it would be, be it, it, it would be unbehoove of me to say to you right now exactly where these individuals are. In 2008, the Sheriff's Administration stated there were 75 drug cartels area in Pinell County. In 2012 and 2011, they also made the same statement that there were 75 drug cartels in Pinell County. So it's going to have to take a very unique approach in order to be able to deal with the problem. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Millsap. Mr. McLaren. Uh, Mr. McLaren, would you like me to read the question? I would, thank you. Drugs in Pinell County, human smuggling in Pinell County. Let me tell you something, as your sheriff, I'm not gonna take the deputies off the road that are answering your 911 calls to send them out there in the middle of the desert and take the front line. We'll take a supporting role out there. The bottom line is, is the federal government, your board of patrol, the federal government, ICE agents, they need to take the lead role out there. That's what they're getting paid for. As deputies, we need to take a supporting role. We need to continue to answer your 911 calls. We have a drug problem right here in your backyard. We need to focus on community policing here in Pinell County to include Gold Canyon and Apache Junction. We need to ensure that we put SROs back into your schools. Whereas we, we, we do have drug problems in your schools, folks. I was an SRO, I dealt with it every day. We need to fix that problem, we need to bring back community policing in Pinell County, focus on the drug smuggling, but let the federal government take the leading role, we'll do a supporting role. Thank you, Mr. President. Please hold your conversation. Mr. Barrett, would you like me to repeat the question, sir? I've got the question. Yes, sir. Thank you. As all of us know, the border is not secure. The federal government needs to go do their job and secure our border right now. We, three to five percent of the drugs coming across is what we catch. The rest of it is going here. Why is it coming here? Because we need to address the issue, educate our kids, get back into the schools, and tell them about the problems that we have. You know that there are more drug cartel members living in the United States than in Mexico. Amazing. But we also, because of Senate Bill 1078 and the immigration issue, it's down to two reasons. Senate Bill 1070 and the economy here in Arizona. Since 2000, the rate was 600,000, and now it's down to 125,000. But in here, we need to get back to our schools, educate our children, and have them change their attitude about what drugs do in their life. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Sheriff Matthew, would you like to repeat the question, sir? No, and I can tell you, if anybody has fought drug cartels coming into Pinell County, it's I and our deputies. 21 agencies. This isn't a one-man show. We have brought 21 law enforcement agencies. In fact, Eric Garnson, he was the police chief. His agency was partnered with us. And we brought the heaviest hand of enforcement that has ever been brought to bear against the cartels. We have people up here who are saying that I'm taking deputies from the beach and sending them to the desert. I've told them this before. That's not happening. How do you think we cut emergency response time in half? Folks, this is common sense. We had, we had received a half million dollars this past year to fund overtime for deputies. They work their 40 hours in their beat, and if you want to earn time and a half, we can send you out in desert operations. We had 100 plus officers and deputies at a time. We arrested, just this past year, 76 Sinaloa cartel members, 108 weapons, not just handguns, scope rifles, AK-47s, even fast and furious weapons. Folks, Janet Napolitano is no fan of mine, and I'm no fan of hers. She's just recognizing us with an award for the Drug Investigation of the Year, right here in Pinell County. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Arnson, is that going to be the question? No, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I won't pander for your vote. 
I'll just tell you this, that your 911 calls here are no more important or no less important than those that live on the south side, the east side, the west side, or what? I can tell you that the many, many years that I have in law enforcement, the most important thing that we can do is provide you public safety. Are there drug cartels here? Absolutely. I fought my entire career with the drug cartels, the drugs coming in and out of this county specifically. But I will tell you that when you're dialing 911, there's a reason. And you have to look at who that perpetrator is. Why are they there? They're here because they're, they're the demand that, that fuels that supply that those drug cartels are bringing to this community. As your sheriff, I will do my best to rid drugs from these, this community. And I do, I do that through leadership. There's plenty of high-speed, low-drag detectives and, and deputies, along with other law enforcement agencies right here. We need to have a cooperative, cooperative effort to serve you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arnson. Mr. Arnson, if you could uh, stay up there. Um, I've had a, a request for a, a quick question here, and I think we'll all kind of like to hear the answers. You can have 30 seconds to answer this question. It's not a hard question, but you'll have 30 seconds, and we'll go with alphabetical order, and then we'll have your closing remarks. The question from the audience is, do you support a ban on the sale of assault rifles? Uh, the quick answer is no, I do not. No, I do not. Um, I am a strong proponent of the NRA. I've been a member for many years. And uh, I, I don't, inanimate objects such as this can't kill me or hurt me. But when it's in the hands of somebody who does, it will hurt me. They can throw it at me, or in the case of a gun, shoot at me. We have to educate ourselves as to what we're doing. I don't want to limit my right to bear arms ever in this country that many of you that are elder fought to defend my right to do so. Thank, thank you, Mr. Arnson. Sir, thank you. I'm good. Do you I'm, I'm, I'm a, a, the same question? 30, 30 seconds, same question. Absolutely. I'm a constitutionally elected sheriff. Even as an Army officer for 20 years, I swore an oath to protect and defend the Constitution. This is a constitutional right. Guns, everybody gets into this fight and you see these awful, horrific shootings. It is mental health issues. It is criminals. Any laws that we create, the criminals are not going to follow them. I, I support an armed citizenry. And this is our constitutional right. And as your sheriff, I will defend that right. And I'm a life member of the NRA as well. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Mr. Barrett, would you like to hear a few questions, sir? No, I don't. I am a constitutionalist from the core of my body. We have in this country the right to bear arms, and I'm gonna fight anybody that tries to take that right away from me. I have a responsibility to protect my family, and I'm gonna stand firmly to do that. As a constitutional sheriff, we are sworn to uphold the laws of this country. Every person here, you can choose to have a weapon or not. I choose to keep mine, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. McLaren. Would you like me to repeat the question, sir? No, I'm good, thank you. <laughs> As a police officer, I think more folks should carry weapons. More law-abiding citizens will make us safer in America. I can tell you that as a law enforcement officer for the last 20 years, I come across many folks that have carried their weapons in their vehicles when I've made traffic stops. The law-abiding ones, usually they let us know that they're carrying a weapon. The bad guys usually don't, but we find out. In America, I think the, the law-abiding citizens should have the right to carry a weapon, just like I do. Thank you, Mr. McLaren. Mr. Millsap. Mr. Millsap, would you like me to repeat the question? No, sir, I don't. Ladies and gentlemen, it's simple and very clear for me. I am a United States Marine. I don't think that question needs to be asked. Do I believe in the use of weapons, assault weapons? Yes, I do. I was an expert, weapon, uh, expert weapons person in the United States Marine Corps. I trained Marines how to use weapons. I don't want that right taken away from me and taken away from you. So do I believe in the use of assault weapons, carrying firearms? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Millsap. Mr. Morgan. Ms. Morgan, would you like to hear a few questions, sir? Uh, no, I, I do not support uh, banning assault weapons. I, I do support keep, keeping them out of the hands of, of nuts. <laughs> of people who have problems and you, you use them to kill them um, But no, I am a constitutional person. I am an oath keeper and I would not 
the support of Mayor Rodriguez. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Mr. Taylor. Mr. Taylor, would you like to ask a question, sir? Yes, sir, please. Mr. Taylor, do you support a ban on the sale of automatic, excuse me, assault rifles? I support the constitutional. I believe that if anybody has an assault weapon, they should be thoroughly, thoroughly background checked. Um, it's very important to law enforcement officers to have that kind of weapon for the things that they're involved with. The bad guys have better guns than we have. So if we go out there with a nine millimeter or something like that, we're gonna get wasted. So it is very important that if you're trained to use that weapon, that you use it and you do it the way you're supposed to use the weapon. So I do support that. Thank you very much. Please make sure you turn your phone on. <laughs>
And in closing, uh, please you know, ask any questions. My website, my email, and my phone number are all on my flyer. And I'd like to hear a big round of applause for this guy with a 15 second sign. He does a great job. I want to tell you, I'm not that guy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. This is Mr. Millsap. Mr. Millsap, you'll have two minutes to complete your closing remarks. Law enforcement is about monopolizing the use of force over the offender. That's what it's about. In order to be able to monopolize the use of force over the offender, you first have to be able to use intelligent design. A strong infrastructure in the department is something that many law enforcement agencies do not know how to implement. Within the United States Department of Justice, ladies and gentlemen, they have implemented programs such as problem-solving policing services. That's what I want to bring here to Pinell County. Problem-solving police service. That's what it's going to take. Implementing programs that will require beat officers to get out of their vehicles, to knock on doors, to visit businesses, to go to community advocacy organizations, to speak with individuals within the community adult, adult facilities. These are the ethos of implementing professionalism within the department. It takes, it takes an individual to first do this. They must know themselves, they must know their job, and they must know their people. And when you know those three things, leadership never fails. Stress leadership, show leadership, give guidance, and turn the truth loose, per se. There's something I, that, something I learned a long time ago was this, that there's no better friend or enemy than a law enforcement official. That's where the story came from with me and the sheriff Redden back in North Carolina. I understand how to implement policy and procedures. I've investigated some of the largest law enforcement agencies in the United States and tore the back end out of them for corruption. That's what I want to do here. There's deep corruption within this department. And I take corruption as this, ladies and gentlemen, fair failure to follow policy and procedure. You want someone who's going to come in here and clean this department up and bring in good, strong performance? Vote Glenn Sexton Millsaps Jr. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Millsaps. Please hold your comments. Mr. McLaren. Mr. McLaren, you'll have two minutes to speak for the remarks. Nearly two decades of professional law enforcement experience I have under my belt. Started my career at the sheriff's office, worked my way up to commander. While at the sheriff's office, part of my duties there was community policing. At the sheriff's office right now, community policing has pretty much disappeared. The importance of community policing, such as SROs, school resource officers, DARE officers, cops on patrol, Citizens on Patrol. Those programs need to be increased here in Pinal County and right here in Gold Canyon. I have law enforcement leaders here in, in Pinal County that's supporting me and endorsing me. One of my big supporters is Jerry Monahan, your police chief right here in Apache Junction. Roger Vanderpool, our former sheriff, former DPS director, has endorsed me for my run for sheriff. I just picked up the endorsement of the FOP. FOP represents 6,500 police officers right here in the state of Arizona. They selected me to be the next Pinell County Sheriff by their vote. I can tell you in my law enforcement career, probably one of the most important things that I've done in my career is work with the community, side by side with the community and other law enforcement agencies, and that's important to me. A lot of times the deputies just stay in their patrol car and they look out that windshield and they go from call to call to call. They hardly ever get it out, out of that patrol car. It's important for them to get out of that patrol car and to know exactly who is in their community. That's what I want to bring back to Pinell County and to the Pinell County Sheriff's Office. I'm Jack McLaren. I'm your former constable here in Pinell County. I recently resigned under the Arizona Resign and Run Law to be your next Pinell County Sheriff. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. McLaren. Mr. Barrett, Mr. Barrett, you have two minutes to complete your closing remarks. Thank you. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to stand before you to earn your support. One of these guys, in fact, on my side of the table, were triplets up here, okay? There's three of us together. 
Well, we're brothers in the fight. We all agree that it's about the fight and fighting criminals and getting them off the street. I want to just tell you a little bit about why I was motivated to run for sheriff. Number one, the sheriff was leaving. He was going to be a congressman. He wasn't going to be here any longer. It was an open seat. I spent a lot of time discussing with my wife if I even wanted to get back into this political scene. We chose to do it. We got our eyes focused on that goal, and that's where we're going. We're out to earn your respect and support. I bring maturity, a high level of law enforcement experience to the table, a commitment to serve only as your sheriff. I have no desire to go anywhere else. More accountability within the sheriff's office. Experience in dealing with budgets as a strong mayor form of government, we must, by law, go and come in with a balanced budget. Two years in a row, that has not happened in your county. Restore integrity and confidence within the sheriff's office. I have been out, my wife and I have hit over 6,000 homes trying to meet the people, learn what they think, not what I think. I don't have the answers, but collectively, we can work together to make it happen. But you know, one of the things that I want to say is this. When I was a kid, and I'm 65 years old, and I've earned every one of these gray hairs, what I want to say is just common sense. Common sense. It's not about being a movie star. It's not about being something else. It's about doing the right thing and working for you. You are paying the way. Coming in on budget, knowing where the money has gone, and do the things that we have to do. Thank you very much. Tom Bear, if you can support me, I would appreciate your vote. We have a table back in the back if you need more. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Sheriff Fabu, you'll have two minutes to complete your closing remarks. I've been beaten up a lot lately. In fact, uh, I was driving down King's Ranch Road, and next thing I know, I had horns on my head. On that picture. Not that one of these guys put it there. Uh, but quite frankly, I've been through 12, 13 forums, debates, and I've had enough of some of my political opponents who have sat in judgment of me, saying that I'm corrupt, calling me immoral, calling me every name in the book, uh, spreading all kinds of wild rumors. And these... The issues that have gone on and the carpet bombing that I have sustained the past five months are personal, private issues that have not affected my job and my performance, that have not affected the results of the sheriff's office. And I ask you to count the people behind me. Five of them have been fired from their job for performance, some of them twice. Two of them declared bankruptcy. And yet they have the audacity to sit here in judgment of me and my budget. My budget is balanced. It has for every year. I'm a fiscal conservative. I have a $2 million surplus in the sheriff's office. The Board of Supervisors isn't going to tell you that. And here's where it comes down to what's 67% mean to you, those residents that live here in Gold Canyon. And I'm going to tell you, 67% reduction these three months, June and in May, June, July, 67% reduction in burglary, 30% in thefts, 23% in assaults. We are doing a better job each and every year. 66 police officers in Apache Junction for 38,000 people. In Santan Valley, there's 83,000 people, and I have 44. They have 20 more cops in AJ when we have more than double the people. And everybody here, is making up stories and how much better there's going to be soda in the water fountains when they're the sheriff. Folks, we have done the job. You don't become the national sheriff of the year elected by your fellow sheriffs without performance. I proudly stand for re-election, and I'll continue to serve as your sheriff for the next four years. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff Colleagues, please hold your comments. One more, and then you can start sharing. Um, Mr. Arnson, you'll have two minutes to complete your closing remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, I might not be as charismatic as Sheriff Fabio, but I promise you one thing. Some of the things he was discussing related to me. 
I have been terminated. I was an at-will employee. The town the assistant town manager was caught speeding by one of my officers. It was reported to town council. They asked me about it. I was up front as I always have been and always will be. Guess what? The next day I was terminated. You'll never see anything on the internet about me, about me folks, and what's under my clothes. I promise you that. <laughs> okay? I promise you that. What you'll see is a respectful, dignified man of morals, of, of Christian values, of family values. I don't sit in judgment of Paul Badview, but as a, as, a, as a candidate for sheriff, it's incumbent upon the leader in that executive seat to set the standard. Every single officer in the United States of America is judged by those incidents and those incidents alone that shame and disrespect that badge. Now, if you have your mind set up for voting for the current sheriff, you can expect more of the same. But if you want dignity, respect, accountability, and transparency, vote for Derek Arnson. I have 20 years in the business. I know what I'm doing. I've been a chief of police. I have a 180-day plan that is very transparent, is very real. Am I gonna come and, and cut heads off, including the chief deputy? And others, no, I'm not. There's good people in this in this department. I'm going to work to improve on that. I'm going to work on fiscal responsibility. Employees that are under discipline are going to be treated fairly. And when they're terminated, we will win because of a disciplinary review board of community members that vet our own investigations so that the outcome is such that the liability fiscally for you, the taxpayer, isn't so large as it is today. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you, Mr. Arson. Ladies and gentlemen, these are your candidates for Pinal County Sheriff. This is